Cool. Hey, hi, this is Bill Hartzer, and this is uh, the Bill Hartzer Podcast, and today is September 5th, 2019, and I have a special guest today, uh, John McAlpin from Card- Cardinal, Cardinal Digital Marketing. I don't know why I can't say the word Cardinal. Um, Cardinal Digital Marketing. So, John, tell me a little bit about, about yourself and your background and um, how you got into SEO and then uh, how you got into doing SEO audits. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I started back when I was actually 11. Um, before I even knew what SEO was, I was just building websites at home because I thought it was cool. I saw my dad do it once and he kind of said, yeah, just you got to learn how to teach yourself. So he showed me W3 schools, which I can't believe it's still going on. Um, so I went to that site and was building you know, basically websites in Notepad and then saving it as a dot HTML, building websites, grouping it, looking, learning how sites come together, how they're structured and how they're uploaded and hosted and managed and things like that. So I kind of had an early foundation of that, kind of had that in the back of my mind. Um, and then right out of college, got into digital marketing um, and actually used all that coding knowledge more on the email marketing front right off the bat. Um, and I was working for an international e-commerce company and ended up recoding all of their email marketing efforts into more mobile friendly responses because this is before this is right when you know mobile devices started taking over desktop a little bit before then so we knew it was on the rise and so uh, i kind of had that mobile friendly mindset going into seo and ended up getting uh, real deep into the healthcare space and then went from there decided you know what out of all digital marketing fields seo is my favorite and ended up moving into a an SEO agency here in Dallas, and then from there over to Cardinal Digital Marketing based in Atlanta, uh, working with some of the best minds in digital marketing, and uh, you know working with a lot of great companies. We worked a lot in the healthcare space, a lot of the enterprise mid-market level companies, um, where I really get to have way more expansive SEO audits and, and really be on the forefront of technology. Sure. So I know the uh, state of search conference is coming up, and you're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the difference between, you know, uh, automated SEO audits and 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 I guess non-automated or you know a, a human doing the SEO audit. What what is really the big difference between so, you know? Those yeah. Two? Yeah. So my whole spiel is about asking the right questions and learning how to ask the right questions. And, and my philosophy is that automated ones don't really, they give you answers with no questions. Now, the difference is automated audits are basically any kind of machine where you put in a domain name and they spit out, you can maybe do some custom settings too, but they basically spit out an SEO grade based on some technical things. They'll say, oh, you've got this many broken links, you've got you know, excessive redirects or some slow load speeds or your, your JavaScript and CSS is not compressed or something. and uh, you know, they kind of just give you general little quick things to tackle, uh, low-hanging fruit, if you will. Um, and But SEO is, that's not really SEO, that's kind of, you know, site improvements, right? So uh, a manual audit is more looking at a site, trying to figure out the context, looking at, um, yes, you want to look at the technical size, but you're also looking at content and keywords and how a user will interpret a website versus how a, a search engine might interpret it how what is the accessibility like for crawlers um and we're really looking at a more holistic view of a website sure so there's a lot of things actually that a you know a site grader or a seo tool you know can can find and certainly those are you know those, a lot of those things the technical issues that are that are a good start um, but there's a lot of issues that, you know, that are more SEO or even marketing related issues that you know, a tool cannot necessarily, you know, give you a grade on. I mean, you know, one, one example um, would be the fact that you might even be targeting the wrong keywords. Um, and it kind of goes back to, you know, an example that is a pretty basic example, but it's actually when I started oh, years ago um, doing doing SEO and for a personal site, um, I had targeted 
you know, keyword um, Labrador retrievers because of the fact that you know we were raising Labrador retrievers, and I wanted to rank well for that particular keyword. And it turns out that that was great, and I ended up ranking for it, but I didn't really see a lot of traffic um, and a lot of you know, in that, and, and people really were just looking for information about about that uh, particular dog breed. It wasn't until I changed to lab, to lab puppies and targeted you know, a different a different keyword, um, and that that's where all the buyers were. That's where all the people were actually looking for a lab puppy, uh, and so that made a huge difference. So you could have a site that is 100% on all the technical SEO things, but really a human is that is only going to be able to look at your whole you know, your SEO strategy and understand the, you know, the user intent of the searches and the keywords and, and, you know, kind of help match up that content with those keywords uh, and what people search to be able to do that. So there is a difference. I mean, it, you know, when I do SEO audits, I do start with crawlers and I do start with a lot of these tools um, and I get those to running. But at the same time, I'm also looking at things like Google Analytics data, and I'm also looking at um, even Google Search Console data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that's one of the things I talk about in my uh, state of search presentation is all the tools that we have at our disposal, how do we blend all these methodologies to have you know a more comprehensive audit? How can we make sure we leave no stone unturned and look at it from multiple points of view and really put the marketing back in search uh, engine optimization and search engine marketing? You know? Yes, I mean, we actually started off with, you know, back in 2004 with the Dallas Fort Worth Search Engine Marketing Association. And I've seen a shift basically from, you know, and I'm trying to remember when it was, but there was a shift in, you know, where, where search engine marketing was, did cover SEO and paid search, but now search engine marketing is now, you know, it was a time where it was um, meant both. And, and it was marketing and now we're at the point where search engine marketing really means paid search and ppc and seo is seo and i think that we're probably even coming to the point where you know seo is actually going to mean a lot of different things it is not just on page but it's off page and you know we do have to have you know paid search and and facebook ads and it all and engagement and all you know it all affects seo yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up. That's been a pet peeve of mine because I'm always on like sales calls or talking to clients and everyone refers to SEM as, you know, PPC. And in my eyes, I always grew up going as search engine marketing. It's the parent name for SEO and PPC and anything you can do to market yourself on a on some kind of search engine. And I don't and I know it's like words are what the, the meaning of words is what you give them. And so I think, you know, search engine or digital sorry, digital marketers are just as much to blame for the change and i don't know if it's for better or positive it's just kind of i think when we have all this terminology it's easy to get confused and so when i talk about search engine marketing i'm having to change it myself because now everyone thinks i'm referring to ppc when i'm talking about more of a holistic marketing strategy so i don't know what caused the change but there is a change and we have to ride this wave yeah i mean there is you know yeah so I did have a client um, come to me and was referred and, you know, by someone else and they, they, you know, they had originally thought that I just did SEO and that, you know, that, you know, this was a, a small business and, you know, their, their understanding was they would, they would have to hire an SEO person, a social media person, you know, a PPC person you know, totally separate and, and for small, many small businesses, that's not, you know, a lot of SEO people nowadays not just do, you know, optimize the site and deal with, you know, title tags and, and, and links. Um, but there's, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of SEOs do, you know, do also Things like Google My Business and 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 you know, and understand that you know things like page search have and and 
you know, even Facebook ads have a lot to do with SEO as well. It's all just driving, all just driving traffic. So it's more digital marketing rather than, you know, at least for small businesses uh, in that case. So a little bit back to SEO audits. So your process basically is that, you know, is I understand that, you know, you, you run these tools and then, you know, then what do you do from there? So I always start with like a general raw data scrape. I use uh, Screaming Frog to get, you know, the most raw data I can get. And I basically first look at, you know, I, I like that they have great visualization tools and I look at their uh, force directed directory crawl. And so basically it's your whole site architecture visualized and try to understand what all the different content silos are on the site. Because typically your content silos follow a similar theme. Now I try to identify what those themes are. And I basically make a list of URLs and, and sections of the site to look at. And then I make that list and I go through and manually look through the site and try to understand the relationship between all of these uh, and what the intent is. Um, and that's, you know, what in one way how a search engine would do it. They'd, they'd look through all your URLs, but whether it's through your site map, um, figure out which URLs not to look at through your robots TXT and um, try to understand where what, what they're going to look at. And once I know what a search engine is going to look at, I'm going to go see, okay, so I know these are, you know, your more indexable pages. How are users going to perceive this as well? Um, so it's kind of a mix of trying to put two different types of hat, thinking hats on, right? Um, sure. So is this, you know, because UX also plays a role in here, right? Because we can have a page rank well, but is it going to convert? Are we answering the right questions? Are things placed in the right way? And um, there's multifaceted things to look at here, but that's pretty, first, pretty much the first thing I look at is like, what is going on with the site? What's the point? And then I'll dive into the little things like, you know, are your H1s optimized? How are your titles and meta? What's the schema looking like? And, you know, you can go through that, but I really want to understand the context before I get into this little, the little things. Sure. So, and, and, you know, obviously um, things like Google and, and, you know, and even just basic Google searches, as well, at, you know, for maybe the company name, and then gave it into Google Search Console data, and Google Search Console, and Google Analytics. Um, you know, as far as Google Search Console goes, what, you know, what areas are there? You know, do you work out there? So yeah, I mean, always look at okay, are there any current manual actions going on? Uh, what's the long-term performance? Like, I love the new performance charts that are in Search Console, and the the new filters they've added. Those are really helpful. Um, so, okay, let me give you a really solid example here of how I look into this in an audit. Uh, I have a sales pitch I was working on this week, and I had a, we had a prospect come to us and say, hey, you know what, we got hit by two, they kept mixing up the terminology. One time they would say, you know, we got hit by two penalties, or then one time they'd say, we got hit by two algorithm updates, and I'm like, okay, so they don't really know what's going on, but I'll take a look. They granted us Search Console access, and I was able to look at the long-term, like the 16-month performance uh, trend, I saw two huge dips, uh, and they were like you know completely flatlined after one day, and then they would go back up for about a couple months and then flatlined again. And I was able to look at that and then compare it with data from analytics to see okay what changed here. What were the top performing pages? Look at you know the landing page data from from organic. Use plot rows to actually look at which pages dropped, and then go to tools like the Wayback Machine to see what changes took place because there's a new update there where they actually show you the changes now. I was able to identify, okay, so you weren't hit by an algorithm that you were not hit by a penalty. You actually made some huge structural site changes and then reverted it and then put it back the way it was, um, and which caused your drops. And so um, that's the one thing I look at in some of my audits if I have a more specific direction. Sure. So that's obviously not something that you know any kind of just an automated tool can necessarily pick up on. Um, you know, there's you've got to have somebody who has some you know SEO experience in order to actually figure that out. Um, right. And you know, so maybe one day we you know through AI and so forth, we may have you know part of that technology you know technology figured out. But at this point, I you know that's probably ten to fifteen years down the road. Uh, you know, you, you know. Until we get to that point, so could be sooner. But at this point, you know, SEO audits are actually running some tools and gathering the data, but actually then, you know, using your your experience um, and I can just 
you know, say it's just SEO experience and be able, be able to figure out things like that. Right, exactly. And then, you know, how you separate yourself from these tools, really, is how can you use this data to tell a story? You know, tell a story of why, what, what ha what's been happening with their performance? Why has their performance been acting the way it has? Uh, what's been some successes? And, and how are, how's everything being interpreted? And find a way to really um, work on our communication skills to really relay this information. Because um, one of the biggest things, like, I guess most SEOs spend half their time is just explaining what they're talking about. Yeah, exactly. So you mentioned you mentioned going you know, going from one uh, that this company, yeah, this site had actually made changes and then gone and then gone back. You know, made a rolled out changes and then rolled back. Yeah, you know, figured out that they. I, I suspect they probably made changes. Their rankings drop and then they they said, okay, what are we going to do? And they decided to roll back to the previous version of the site or something like that. Oh, it's, that's where, yeah. that's oh. where uh, you know, things like log files and, and I think can come into play because there might be a fair amount of traffic and going to 404 errors or there might be actually, you know, go, causing 404 errors or there might be traffic um, that, you know, going to a section of the site that they, they missed or, you know, something like something similar to that. Uh, can I make a note right here with that? Um, so I'm not, again, I don't work for any tools, I'm not sponsored by anyone, but that's something that I think OnCrawl does pretty well, is that they are able to categorize, break out your log files into categories of your site. So you can say, I know, if you have like a bunch of subpages under a category, like you can just look at uh, your log crawl analysis by category, and that's one way you can get some quick insights into big changes like that. Yes, definitely. And so then, you know, obviously you can look at Google Search Console data and look at, uh, you know, that, and that's where kind of you know, the, the start of it was. And then, you know, obviously you would, um, in theory, you could, you know, if you'd identify those particular changes, you know, um, in traffic, for example, um, then, you know, you would look at the period of time before and compare that with the period of time after you know, to see what changed. Um, you know, I know also as far as rankings go, you know, and, and keywords, um, you know, that site was ranking for, you know, I know that SEM Rush has, you know, some of that data as well. Um, you know, and, and some of their some of their plans you may you know, some of their their more expensive plans, for example, that you have to pay for um, that they, you know, they may have even a little bit more data where you can see that's what they were ranking for when and so forth. Uh, but the overall picture is, you know, you, you can determine that and, and then also line that up with an algorithm update. There, are, If there's a, you know, a point in time where we know that on, on a particular date there was a major update, you know, and if that, you know, that drop in traffic corresponds to that, that ranking up, you know, that, that update, like a core update or, or a panda or penguin updates that have happened years ago, um, we can you know we can correlate that. Yeah, and in that case, I, I usually go to Barry does a great job at SE Roundtable of keeping track of all this stuff, whether it's big, small, confirmed, unconfirmed. Um, he's got a whole page just listed those out, so you can always track down the dates for those as well. Yes, definitely. So we're just about uh, just about out of time, but tell me a little bit more about uh, about you and and how we can uh, how we can get in touch with you, uh, how we can I guess hire you to do an SEO audit or to, you know for or uh, get in touch with your, your firm. Sure. Uh, yeah, if you are a business uh, of any kind, um, you can always find me at cardinaldigitalmarketing.com. Uh, just fill out a contact form and we'll be in touch and have a conversation. Uh, we do a lot more relationship marketing versus, you know, cookie cutter, put you in a, in a line with a bunch of clients. We are re much more relationship based and custom tailored to you. If you are a marketer and just want to keep in touch, connect, add me to your, uh, to your contacts or just have specific questions, um, you can always find me on Twitter at S uh, uh, SEO Counseling. Or you can read me. I'm a writer for Search Engine Journal. You can find me there as well. 
Um, or if you're wanting to learn a little bit more about auditing, I highly recommend checking out a state of search this year. It's in November 4th and 5th in Dallas. Um, great full scale digital marketing conference with covers not just SEO, but a lot of great PPC speakers and, and paid social speakers and content strategists. A lot of big names are going to be there, um, bigger than myself. And so I highly recommend going to that as well. All right. Sounds great. This has been um, the Bill Hartzer podcast for September 5th, 2019. Um, thanks again, John, for joining me today, and we will see you online.